everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Devani and welcome to today's edition of Dev's Bookshelf. I totally forgot what this segment was called. Welcome to Dev's Bookshelf. So this month I'm telling you the books that I read. It's actually gonna be really, really quick because life update. We are getting ready to sell our house. So I've never done that before. Um, like when we first moved to this house, I was six, we came from Calgary and my parents moved here and like I had no say in it because I was six. And um, then we got married and moved across the street and now we're back here and now we're like officially selling it. So this is my first time for real moving. Like when I was little, obviously my parents handled all that, but this is me, an adult, getting ready to do all that fun stuff that's moving and it's not fun. Like when I hear people say like, oh, I moved, I'll never do it again. They're not lying. Like this is not fun. So um, I don't know if you could tell by where I am, but I'm literally sitting on the floor in a corner. My closet's right here, which is actually somewhat organized. I couldn't sit on my bed because it's moved around. We're painting. This is probably the last room to be painted as of right now. So it's crazy. It's wild. It's almost 11 o'clock at night. So. That's our life right now. Getting ready, packing, decluttering, painting. That's it, that's all we do. Anyways, all that to say is life update. We're moving, I'm looking forward to doing um, like some decluttering videos because that's a thing. Um, maybe some organizing things. Once you move, I'm gonna do a house tour and show like all the cool things that we're doing and then how we're gonna decorate and all that fun stuff. Anyways, this month I was able to squeeze in some reading in the middle of um, all the crazy that's going on here. And I was able to read four books, but I'm actually gonna talk about five because the last book I read last month, I'm still on a book hangover. So let's get to it. But before we do that, please hit that like and subscribe button. And yeah, so this month is March. Wow. I feel like it was just February and now it's like March is literally almost over. Anyways, for the month of March, I read four books, but I really, really wanna tell you guys the book that I ended last month on because I am still thinking about it. Okay, so the last book that I read last month is called The Idea of You by Robin Lee, like Robin, R-O-B-I-N-N-E, so it's like super fancy. Okay, this book is totally like fan fiction. Um, the main character I'm thinking is very much Harry Styles and it's like mom, divorced, has a child, child loves this British pop band, Again, think One Direction, it makes this all easier. And mom takes her kid on a, to the concert, they go on a meet and greet, meet the band, and then like in some crazy wild roundabout way, the mom ends up having an affair essentially with one of the guys in the group. So mom's like in her 40s, guys, maybe 21, I don't know. But he's very much like Harry Styles and that's all that was in the back of my mind. And let me tell you, I loved this book. So much emotion, so many feelings, so much sex. But it was wild and like there was really nothing to this book, but I could not put it down. I loved it so much. Um, and then I ended up being on like a three week book hangover. When the book ended, I had no desire to keep reading. I was just in this bubble of, of these characters and all the feelings. And like, let me tell you, there were feelings. I left that book hungover. I was on a book hangover and I'm not gonna lie, I'm still not over it. Um, I have done a very poor job in giving a synopsis or really telling you anything about the book, but all I'm telling you is go read it. Go read it. I gave it five out of five and it's literally, literally because I just can't stop thinking about it. Like it means everything that I love besides food. It is boy bands, love, romance, drama. Like it was great. That's all I can say. Get it, the idea of you. The first actual book that I read in March was called Undercover Bromance by Lisa K. Adams. So this book, apparently it's book two in the series and I cannot find book one anywhere. I'm probably gonna have to get it like the Kindle version. You have these five guys, they're big, hunky football sports guys, um, really rich, awesome. And they start a book club together to read the manuals and the manuals are romance books, like not how to romance books, like the smutty 
really embarrassing. Nobody wants to admit that they read these romance books. And that's how they learn about love and how they learn about women. And I'm not sure how um, accurate that would be from those books, but I mean, hey, the main character, he's rich. He wasn't one of the like football sports players. Um, he was like a bar owner. So really rich, really young, really successful. And he had his own bar. He was trying to impress a girl because he's following all his steps and he's the go-to guy in the group to help everyone else with their relationships. Only he has never had a successful relationship. And then while he's at this restaurant trying to impress this girl, completely screws over this waitress and gets her fired. While this is going on at the front of the house of the restaurant, in the back house, waitress is, you know, getting fired and sees like a whole sexual assault happen and she's the type of tough cookie who wants to you know take this guy down and we're gonna do this and whatever I'm gonna save this girl very impulsive eventually the two of them end up working together just to get it all out in the open like it was a great book it kind of combined like the whole me too movement um with romantic comedy I guess and just the idea of these five guys like sitting in a coffee shop talking about romance books it was kind of funny so i liked the book great kickoff to the month i gave it a four and a half out of five i recommend it easy read the only thing i would say trigger warning there is um not just like a sexual assault but like a whole predatory aspect of it so like kind of think harvey weinstein of it all just abuse of power. Take that as a warning, but it was a pretty good book, so recommend it. The second book that I read this month was called Anna Kay, A Love Story by Jenny Lee. Anna Kay was, first of all, really long for a book for teenagers. Um, I think it's like a young adult's book. It was long. I'm an adult and I was, I was exhausted. This book was very um, crazy rich Asians meets gossip girl. Yes, very Upper East Side, a lot of money, um, just rich kids that don't know what to do with themselves and with their parents' money and just kind of act irresponsibly. So it was a good book. I gave it a four and a half out of five, maybe a four and a quarter actually, just for the length. But it was really good, much more mature. There was drugs, there was sex, there was death. I did not see that coming. Or this book started off right off the jump heavy. Like there was like a Snapchat cheating or something of that sort, like a text message cheating scandal. And that's how the book started. And you have different characters and we get it from their different perspectives, but they're all connected in the end. Like they really, really intertwined. And then it ended up being so stinking tragic that it was beautiful. Jenny Lee, you're a genius. That's all I could say. This is more heavy, serious. Um, drug abuse is a theme. Like I said, there's a couple deaths at least. Um, again, sex, depression. Like it was heavy. It was legit like watching Gossip Girl, but more modern. So if you're into that, I recommend. Number three was our Redheads Book Club book of the month, and it's called Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. I don't think my brief summary is gonna do this book justice. So I think I might have to read this one because this book was, was so layered. So it's about three women. You have a transgender woman, a cisgender woman, and a transgender woman that detransitioned and there's an unexpected pregnancy and they're trying to figure it out like figure out who uh, who they are and how who they are is going to play into how this pregnancy plays out and how they can all manage it together so there's a lot of layers to this book because they for the two transgender women they, we get like a bit of a backstory so we see um we see some of their background, how they were in their relationship. We see a lot more in terms of Amy slash Ames's um, backstory, like as a child and everything. I don't recall if for the character Reese we saw as much. You see Reese more in her adult life, her adult transition life where um, 
her desires and stuff are not overly healthy and she's not in healthy relationships by any means. And then she and Amy get into this relationship and things are going great, but there's trust is broken and like, it's just bad news bears. And then Amy detransitions, goes back to being a man named Ames, like James without the J and ends up having a thing with his boss, the pregnancy, and then it, like, it all comes into this weird full circle where Reese's one desire is to be a mother, but obviously she can't. And then Ames is like, solution, you can be a quasi sorta ish mother to this new baby. And there's nothing funny about this book. Like this book is really serious. It is very well written. Um, I'm surprised that I liked it. It was a very strange book. Like I can't, I don't know how to feel about it. It was good. It was very thought provoking. There was a lot of layers, a lot to unpack for each person, each backstory, each idea, each thing that everyone was thinking. There was just a lot. And it was a good book though. Never in a million years would I think that I'd read it. I truthfully don't think I'm gonna read it again. For a book club book, it's great. And I'm really excited for the episode, whenever it airs, to hear how the girls on the podcast um, break down the book because it was it was really complex and then like when we got sort of gearing up to the end and there was all these decisions to be made and then it kind of stopped like I don't know how the book ended I don't know how the final decisions played out and I don't I doubt there's going to be a sequel and if there is I really won't read it but surprisingly I ended up giving this book a four out of five um and it's really shocking like this is one a book that had it not been for the podcast, I never would have picked it up. Two, I'm so surprised that I even continued reading it because it's not my genre, it's not my writing style, but kind of like last month's book club book with the four wins, it was good. There was something there to drive you to keep going. And then number three, it I got different perspectives. Like, you know, you're in your little bubble in the world and you only know what you know. And this, um, it, it definitely gave a different perspective to something I'd had no familiarity with. So I recommend it. Um, and if you do read it, don't forget to tune into the Redheads podcast on the first Thursday of the month to hear them discuss it. And the last book that I read this month um, was just a fluke. Like I just literally just got an email saying, hey, this book is coming out this month. Um, all the rage, go get it. And I did. It's called The Girls Are All So Nice Here by Lori Elizabeth Flynn. Dang, this one had a lot of drama. Oh, cool. The author's from on London, Ontario. Huh, fascinating. So it's basically two former best friends are um, getting like these weird invites for their high school reunion. And they both don't really wanna go because something really bad happened back in the day. And again, another slow burn. Like you know that this bad thing is happening, but you don't know what the bad thing is yet. And like I was borderline getting to that point where tell me or I'm not gonna care anymore. And then you got it and things kind of went really back and forth screwy. It's in the psychological thriller genre. There wasn't as much of the psychological aspect for 90% of the book, nor was there that much thriller. When, you know, the thriller part came, there was still about like 86% of the book before things just, you know, did that turn. And then in the last, maybe two chapters where you got backstory and current story where everything was kind of adding up. Nothing added up perfectly. And even in the end, I'm not sure I know the full story, but I think that's the point. The character is just kind of like, I don't care. This is my full story. This is my truth and I'm gonna handle it in the way that I want. Then you had the epilogue that was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now I really don't know because like you just couldn't be trusted because you just threw a wrench in our whole thriller. And I don't really, I don't know. I'm really concerned for certain characters in this book. So it took me about two days to read. And that's two days um, where I was doing very minimal reading and doing all this house stuff. I think I read maybe 40, uh, maybe, no, I read about 60% of the book today. So it keeps you moving. It's um. It's not the best psychological thriller that I've read. So I'm actually gonna ask all of you, give me your best psychological thriller recommendations because after reading, I don't know, The Wives or whatever the first one of that that I read last year, everything's kind of been lackluster. So on the scale of like The Wives to a Simple Favor, it's kind of in the middle. It's not, you know, 
the twist happens and I'm rushing to finish. It's like the twist happened and it happened and whatever. But it wasn't bad. I'm giving it on um, Goodreads. I gave it a four. I'm not really sold on that because I only finished the book like 25 minutes ago. It's either between a four, like a 3.5, four-ish. So I recommend it only because it's a quick read, like a beach read if you want to do that. Um, nothing life-changing, probably not going to stick with me, but mm, that's that. Those are the books that I read on Deb's bookshelf this month. They were all on Kindle. Um, nothing this month, I guess, got lower than a three out of five. So I recommend every single one of those books. If you have any books to recommend to me, let me know in the comments. Like I said, psychological thrillers, send them my way. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Also, you can follow me on both my normal Instagram and my bookstagram. I don't know how much I'll be reading in the next month because hopefully we're selling our house, but I'll let you know, keep you posted, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.